Hey you guys, uh, this video is being put together to help you guys out with um, uh, how to basically put together a two-point perspective drawing of a, of a room interior from direct observation. So um, we're going to be doing something kind of similar to this in-class demonstration that I did where um, it's all based on something uh, that I was actually looking at. Um, but we're going to use our uh, two vanishing points on the sides here uh, to, to create a environment that actually uses two-point perspective properly. Um, so uh, just to kind of show you where we're going to start, uh, we're going to begin by making a template kind of like this, where we have um, our, uh, our picture plane set up, we have a horizon line. Uh, on the very far ends here, there's two vanishing points, and uh, we're setting up little guidelines to kind of cut across the page on diagonals, um, which is going to give you guys a, a you know, a kind of a way of being able to um, freehand draw most of this. You know, we'll basically do a lot of freehand drawing, and then we'll, we'll go in with rulers and kind of clean things up a little bit. Um, so, um, real quick, I'm just going to show you guys how I have myself set up here. Um, and by the way, this is a, a completely unedited video, so um, you <laughs> bear with me a little bit. Um, okay, so let me just show you what I'm going to be drawing with you guys today. Um, this is the space. Uh, this is my lovely living room. And um, you see how I'm set up. I'm, I'm kind of facing myself toward the corner of the room. I'm in one corner of the room and I'm facing another corner of the room. And um, I'm going to try to include as much of all of this as I can into my picture. So I'll probably get a little bit of the couch here. Um, definitely want to get some of the um, the uh, little yoga mat I set up for myself, the TV, and, and just everything that's in this area here. Um, my, my camera can't zoom out super far, so um, I kind of have to pan around. But um, yeah, this is basically the scene that we're going to be drawing. Okay. Um, also, uh, I'm going to get up real quick and just kind of show you how I have myself sitting. Um, there's a, a chair, which I'll be sitting in right here. And then there's another chair in front of me, um, which is going to basically give me the ability to kind of like lean my drawing board uh, up against uh, the backrest of this chair. Okay, so um, that way you can kind of set up your drawing board in a way that um, you, you kind of you know, you're not like drawing flat on your paper. You're, you can kind of hold your paper up at an angle. Okay, so um, I am going to get us started here. Um, I do have kind of a stand I can put my phone on. And that should stabilize everything so this isn't really shaky. Okay, so I'm sitting at my chair. Got my drawing board set up. I'll just make a little adjustment here. Okay. And then, yeah, we're going to be uh, setting up this type of a template for ourselves, okay? So um, I'm going to be using this for the drawing, um, but before I go there, I'm, we're, we're going to go ahead and I'll just show you guys how to set this up to begin with from a blank sheet of paper, okay? And I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, you will want a ruler for this, um, but uh, some of the stuff we're going to kind of freehand, at least in the beginning, okay? Um, so uh, this is trying to make sure you can see my entire page here. Okay, but basically, yeah, the edges of my paper are here, so this is just about the, the entire thing. Um, so, first thing we want to do is set up a horizon line. This is something you want to do pretty much in any um, perspective drawing, like right away. It's like, like the first thing you do. Um, because our, hori our, our horizon line is where all of our vanishing points go, which is, you know, obviously a very important part of perspective. Um, I'm going to use a, a ballpoint pen for this, uh, just because it's a little bit darker than a pencil. Um, but you, you'll probably want to use a pencil for this just so you can erase. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of try to freehand uh, a straight line. And this is my horizon line. It um, doesn't look like it from the camera view, but this is actually right in the middle of my page. Okay, so try to, try to kind of keep the space from here to here, uh, even from the top to bottom as well. Okay, and the um, point of doing it freehand is just so I can kind of look at it from a distance and see if it looks relatively straight. Um, and uh, once I've gotten that about where I want it, I'm going to use my ruler and just kind of draw a nice clean line there. Okay, um, so yeah, that's nice and horizontal, um, even distance from top to bottom of the page uh, along that line. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to do is set up some vanishing points, um, and we want these as close to the edge of the paper as possible. Um, because if the vanishing points get too far in um, toward the middle, they're, it's going to make the perspective look a little bit exaggerated, and uh, we don't want exaggeration here. Okay, so there's two vanishing points on my horizon line here and here. 
um, super close to the edge of the paper. This one's close to the perforated edge, and this is close to the um, edge edge, right? All right, so just um, next thing we want to do is set up a picture plane, uh, because if we start drawing stuff out here in perspective, it's going to look distorted. And so we're trying to avoid that. Um, so we're going to kind of create a rectangle that all the drawing itself is going to fit inside of. And um, everything inside that rectangle should um, sit in there nicely and not look distorted, you know, through a, like a weird skewing or something. Okay, so um, anyway, to do this, um, let's set up just so we're all pretty consistent here. I, I usually use about the width of my hand. Um, this is an 18 by 24 piece of paper. So um, if we're using that, about the width of your hand across your knuckles, I'm going to make a mark right there and uh, gonna do the same thing on this side here. And that should make nice even spacing. And this is where my two vertical edges of the picture plane are going to go. So. I'm just going to really lightly kind of freehand what I think looks like a nice vertical going that way. And then um, through this mark here, going to do the same thing, right? So the hand width is just like how far from your uh, two vanishing points you want your picture plane to kind of squeeze in. Um, as far as the distance from top to bottom of the page, um, you can do about two fingers worth of width from the top of the page, two or three. Um, I'm going to use two here. And uh, that's, that's going to be the distance from the top of the page. And um, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, bottom of my page is down here. That's about uh, two fingers worth of width. And uh, I'm just going to make a little mark there and then kind of run my line across. Again, just kind of really lightly in freehand. Um, and now I'm going to go through and uh, straighten all this stuff out with my ruler. So when you do this, uh, just try to um, really pay attention to your ruler edge. And if you can, make sure that it runs parallel to the top edge of the paper, just so that uh, things don't look all crooked, right? We want, we want nice, straight, horizontal lines. OK, so that's, that's pretty straight. OK, so um, that is the top edge of my picture plane. Now I'm going to go over the sides here. Um, by the way, uh, verticals sometimes can be a little hard to do. so. Um, if it helps, you know, you might actually turn your paper sideways um, and, and that might help you actually draw a better uh, vertical. Like, like, for example, if I take my whole paper and turn it like this, right? For me, at least, it's a little bit easier uh, to see if this is, you know, actually running parallel to the, um, the, the edge of the paper right here. Uh, for me, I, I have a really hard time with vertical edges. So um, this is kind of my solution to the problem. Okay, so that's nice and straight. I'll turn this back. And um, lastly here, I just want to get that bottom line of the picture plane, which is here. Nice and straight. Okay. And um, yeah, that's... I uh, wish I could zoom out a little bit more, see if I can do that. Okay, so this is what I got here. So a big rectangle in the middle of my page, um, about a hand's width from the two vanishing points, which are really close to the edges of my paper. Um, and uh, the last thing we need to do is set up some guides. Okay, so I'm going to uh, show you real quick just how to start this, and then we'll skip ahead because um, I don't want to take all your time watching me do a billion lines. But basically, um, we want to get we want to get our pen kind of right at the vanishing point right here, or our pencil. And uh, you're going to bring your ruler. Actually, I'm going to do it on this side so you can see it better. Um, right, this is. This is where my vanishing point is. Um, I just put my, my pencil here. And then I'm going to bring the ruler up to that pencil. So it's like an anchor right here. Um, you can even push in with your pencil a little bit to kind of dent it. And that way, it's a little easier to kind of keep the, uh, the tip of the pencil in that little divot. Um, but yeah, we're just going to do a couple faint lines. Okay, the, the key here is to make these really light. Okay, so this is not a heavy line. And I just need it to go into the rectangle here. It doesn't have to go. Um, all the way across the page, but it does need to go into this little area here. Um, and as I do more and more of these, uh, I just really need to make sure that it's going through the picture plane. Okay, but they all should be going back to this point right here. See, I put my pencil here. Like, that lets me kind of like, like pivot the ruler on that point, and I can make my next line. And then I do it again. All right, and then again. And because I put that little dent in there, every time that I put my pen back here, it kind of falls into that little hole right there. Um, and so it's just a nice efficiency. You know, it's, a, it's a way of doing this um, consistently, because we really want these lines uh, to go directly into that point each time. Okay? Um, so yeah, you're going to do this on both sides. So right now, I'm just doing the right side. And then um, after that, we're going to skip over to the left. And, and these lines are going to have to go all across um, this way. They're going to radiate across the entire page, going um, across the top and the bottom. Okay, so um, 
Also with spacing, uh, you want about a thumb's width probably uh, between each one of these lines around the outer border. Um, the, the spacing doesn't have to be perfectly consistent and even all the time. Um, but as far as like how wide you put these, um, something close to about a thumb's width would be pretty good. Um, and again, just keep them really light because these aren't going to be a part of your drawing. They're just going to be there to kind of show you what angles you want to use when you have to draw uh, receding edges in perspective. Okay. So here, I'm just going to really quickly finish up this one side here. And then we'll skip down to the bottom and do the other half of it. Okay, so you're just going to keep going like this over and over again. And again, just really try to make sure that these lines are going um, exactly to this point right here. Okay, and then um, when you're done doing this, you're going you're gonna to do the same thing on the other side coming from here. We're going to send a bunch of lines out this way um, so that in the end, uh, we, we get our template, which is what I showed you a little bit earlier. Right here. Okay, so so when you're all done with this, it should it should look like that, right? And uh, we're going to draw everything inside of that rectangle. Okay, so um, let's begin with that. Okay, so I'm going to kind of angle my camera up again just to kind of show you sort of what I'm looking at. Okay, so um, what's important here is to kind of pay attention to where I'm looking, um, like. I'm kind of facing sort of toward the corner of the room, but really like my center line is kind of where that, that head is right there. Um, so when I draw like the, I'm going to start with this inner corner right here, but it's not going to be exactly in the center of the page. It's going to be a little bit over uh, to the left. So if I kind of angle the camera back down here, okay, we'll see that the, the, the center of the page is about here, right? Um, I'm going to start my corner of the room a little bit off to the left. Okay, this is a little bit of like, I'm kind of eyeballing this a little bit, um, but I just don't want to make it perfectly centered uh, if I'm not, you know, directly looking at that corner of the room. What's important actually, um, because this is a, uh, what's kind of called a two point parallel perspective where uh, these vanishing points are at a 45 degree angle out from the center line. Um, or they're equidistant, right, from the center. Um, we want to make sure that when we look at our room, we're actually angling at a 45 degree angle to the wall, right? So if I actually turn and look toward the corner, um, like I'm not actually looking at a 45 degree angle exactly, um, but if I if I kind of look about this way, I am. It, it doesn't matter that much, you know, but it's just it's just a matter of me trying to um, make this look as much as possible like the room that I'm that I'm trying to draw. Okay, and so I'm trying to make it match the um, perspective system that I've kind of set up here, you know, so that it fits the template better. So anyway, that said, um, I have drawn the corner of the room, and I want you to notice the uh, the size of that that corner of the room, like the height of this, is pretty short. Um, I, for me, you know, it's it's usually good to use about a hand's width when you're working on an 18 by 24 sheet of paper. Um, if I make this too tall and I start building the walls out, um, basically what's happening is we're too zoomed in. So what I'm trying to do is kind of make this sort of shorter, um, just so that just so that I'm not um, basically dr drawing a corner of a room, but I'm drawing an entire room, actually like zooming out and drawing the space. Um, so this is about like the width of my hand is in terms of its height. Um, and a little bit, you probably want a little more height uh, up here, right, from your center line or from your eye line uh, than you have down here. And this is just because I'm sitting kind of low um, and my eye level's uh, a little bit lower to the ground than it is to the ceiling. Um, if it's right in the center, that's fine too, but it might look a little bit different than what you're actually looking at. So that's, that's why um, I try to kind of consider that this should be probably a little bit taller than this space right here. Okay, but anyway, not, not that important. But um, this is gonna be the top corner of, of the room, okay? So what's important here actually is that I don't, I don't really wanna observe the angle. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw the angle of the ceiling so much um, as I am just trying to follow my guide right here. Okay, so I'm not even, I don't even have to really look at the room in front of me. Um, I just need to look at these little guidelines, right? These are the lines that show me the angles that I want to draw in perspective. Um, if, I, if I'm doing the setup correctly, this should already look close enough to those two angles that I'm seeing in the ceiling. Um, again, if I kind of angle this upward a little bit, um, kind of looks like that. So there's like a little bit of a, a slightly more shallow angle on this side and a slightly steeper angle going this way. Um, and that should be, if I'm doing this really correctly, that should slightly be reflected in my drawing. Um, so 
And that's, that, that is true that this is a little bit steeper of an angle and this is a little bit more shallow, just because um, this starts at a point that's further away from this vanishing point um, than this wall, which starts a little closer to this vanishing point. Anyway, um, down at the bottom, again, I'm gonna follow the guides. Now, I'm not actually on this guideline, but this is the closest guideline to that point. I could bring this down to the guide. It makes it a little easier, but I don't really need to. I just need this to kind of go basically parallel to the nearest guide right here. Okay, right here, um, going this way, this is the guide that's closest, right? So I wanna make sure that this kinda follows that. I don't want my line to travel out this way, right? Because then it, it crosses through this guide right here. All right, this needs to basically stay in its lane and uh, continue to follow the nearest guide, okay? And this sets up my two wall planes, right? So um, again, just to kinda bring us back to what we're actually looking at here. Um, what I just did is that corner of the room and the uh, the, the floor planes kind of, uh, the bottom of the wall is coming out this way and then the top of the ceiling kind of angling out that way and that way, okay? And that's, um, that's basically what I just did. Now, this isn't necessarily gonna look exactly like what I'm, what I'm seeing, but um, as far as the angles go, but again, the important thing is that we're applying the perspective and we're just basing this drawing um, on what we're seeing in front of us. So I'm, I'm drawing the room that I see in front of me, but it, it doesn't have, not every angle has to be exactly what I see. It has to, it's more important that it fits the perspective system, that all of these angles that I draw are going to the two vanishing points, okay? So the, the right facing, um, or sorry, the, the left facing plane, or the plane that's on the right, um, those top and bottom edges go to this vanishing point, and the, left fa the right facing plane on the left, that angles toward the right vanishing point, all right? So um, see, what else do I got here? Um, next thing I'm gonna do is, is stuff that's like on the walls and stuff. So like the doorway right there, um, I'm gonna do um, maybe the pictures on the wall, um, the desk, uh, this little kind of like bookshelf right here, the TV. Start with the walls first, then I, I'm gonna bring myself forward and then eventually I'll do the yoga mat and stuff like that, okay? Um, so here, uh, put us back here again. All right, I'm just gonna start start drawing this stuff out here. Okay, so I'll start showing you less of the room that I'm looking at and a little bit more of what I'm drawing. Okay, so the observational part of this right here is that I'm trying to make an observation of how far the door, how, how far the wall comes out before I hit the edge of the door. And then also how high the door is um, before I have to stop, you know, before I, I hit the ceiling here. Okay, so I'm trying to look at like how much space I got here versus here, and I'm looking at that um, in front of me, okay? Uh, as far as the angles go, this is the angle of the top of the door, right? And that's just because that angle falls in between this guide and this guide, and it needs to angle toward that vanishing point on the left, okay? Because that's what the wall does, right? The wall's bottom edge and top edge go to my left vanishing point. So the top and the bottom even of this door, which is actually not a door, it's gonna be more of an opening, um, both of those have to angle this way. All right. um, another observation is how much space I bring this out. Like if I go here, it's a little bit wide, I think. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go in a little bit. And this is where I put my next vertical. Okay, so in two point perspective, basically all you're dealing with is vertical edges like this. And if they're not vertical, um, they're, they're diagonal. And the diagonals will have to either go to this vanishing point on the left or this vanishing point on the right. Okay, so again, that's that's the door, that's the proportions. Um, this is again kind of the opening that I drew. Um, right, so you can kind of see, I'm trying to match the proportions as best I can. It's kind of a narrow opening, a little taller. Um, and uh, the, the, you know, the, it's basically what you're observing is proportions and spacing. So the spacing here and here, the width of the door, that's all observed, the height of the door is observed. And then everything else, as far as angles go, it's it's, just using vanishing points. So you observe everything except for the angles, basically. Okay, um, next thing I'm gonna draw, there's a um, there's a kind of like a bookshelf here. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna kind of do here is try to pay attention to overlap. Um, so the bookshelf here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring us back up here. The bookshelf overlaps the, at the right edge of this opening right here. So um, I need to draw that out past a little bit, and then you can see this edge right here, which runs basically parallel to the, um, the edges of the opening, but it's a little bit further to the left, right? And how much further to the left depends on my observation, right? It's not gonna, it doesn't like run through the middle of the door opening, it's a little bit to the right, kind of closer to the right edge than the left edge, 
Okay, um, so that, that's again an observation that I'm making, and then I'll show you how that applies to the actual drawing. Sorry, just I gotta keep adjusting this thing. Okay, so observing, um, the, it looks like I go about this far before the bookshelf kind of overlaps on the top edge here of the door. Okay, and then um, this bookshelf kind of comes back at an angle, and then uh, there is like a vertical edge here that comes down to the ground somewhere. Um, if I follow this this angle out, okay, again, this is this is an angle that's got to be going toward this vanishing point, so um, it's kind of running pretty close to being a parallel to the door edge here or the the opening. Um, but really, it's it, I'm looking at these two guides that I'm sitting in between. I'm trying to make sure that this looks like it it kind of follows the path between these two guides going to that point. Um, what I am observing is how much distance this travels out before I hit the corner. Um, you can also look at the angle from here to here. Uh, that that will kind of help triangulate where exactly this corner is. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit of a guess, but we want it to be not just a wild guess, but kind of like an observed, educated guess, sort of. Okay. So again, this kind of angle slightly in, and then um, a vertical down like this. Still don't really know exactly where to end these down here at the bottom, but I'll show you how to do that. Okay, um, on the uh, right edge here, there's a right-facing plane. Now this is a different plane than um, than the front one I just did. So this one's going to angle in the opposite direction toward the right vanishing point. So the the top edge, one edge goes toward the left vanishing point. Um, once I hit this corner, it's going to shift and go toward the right vanishing point. And um, again, just so I don't have to set up a ruler and draw this all the way to here. I just I just need to follow these two guides right here, okay? And then my, my observation I'm taking is really just um, how much space I need here. I'm looking at it. Um, it looks like there's this is a longer space and this should be a shorter space. So I'm just gonna try to make that look a little bit shorter um, on this side than on this side. Um, this, by the way, there's a little more of a kind of an ornate kind of curve to these, but I'm kind of simplifying them as like kind of just little tapering angles in um, before we hit our verticals. Okay, and this is the vertical plane. Now here, um, this is what's gonna tell me uh, how far to bring all this stuff down, because when this vertical edge comes down, um, it's this thing's like kind of wedged up against the wall, so it's gonna stop once I hit this bottom edge of the um, of the ground, right? The, or the bottom of the wall, where the, where the ground meets the wall. Uh, sorry guys, still adjusting the camera. Okay, um, yeah, so so once I hit the ground here, right, this vertical drops down, it hits the ground. Um, now I gotta send a line out this way, okay? It's closest to this guide, and this is a part of a right-facing plane, which means that it's top and bottom edges angled to the right vanishing point over here, right? So um, both this bottom edge and this top edge kind of tilt in toward each other, going toward this point. Um, or in other words, they just kind of follow the guides that go in that direction. Okay, um, once we hit this vertical edge, then we got a shift. This happens to fall on a guide, so I can just use that. And that basically sets up the, um, the box structure of the bookshelf. So I think, I think mine's a little bit fat and wide and short and stubby um, compared to what I'm looking at, but it's close enough. Um, next thing I'm going to do is, is divide this into the, the shelves that it has. There are four openings. There's one on the top, one here, one here, one here. So there's one in the middle, right? And then in between these two halves, here and here, there's another middle one and another middle um, shelf. So I'll show you how to divide this, okay? We're going to use the trick with the, the little X's, okay? So starting with um, this corner here, not this top one, but this one right here, going to this bottom one. I'm going to draw and X. These are actually, it, it, it's better for you to do this with a, some kind of a straight edge, like a ruler or something, because um, you really want to find out where the center is. Because once these two lines cross, that gives you the middle. And the more straight these are, the better. So I'm actually going to go on ahead and do that. I'm going to use a ruler. It's kind of a big ruler for this, but um, this will at least get me a little more accurate, hopefully, as far as where my centers go. Okay. So where that X happens, that's right in the middle. And um, this is, this is going to be the shelf that goes kind of across this way, 
Um, it's going across the left plane, which faces toward the left vanishing point, right? So, so this angles up toward that point, which um, uh, again, I, I can just use the guides to kind of find that. Okay, and basically you see this divides this in half so that this rectangle is the same as that rectangle. And then we're gonna repeat this process of drawing the X's. So now I've got a, a rectangle on the top here with two corners here and here. Um, I'm going to connect those corners with an X. And again, you probably wanna do this with a ruler. Um, I'm just going to freehand it because I have a pretty straight hand. But um, right, that gives me the center. Whether that X crosses, right? That's another middle point. This one's really close to the eye level, so I'm just going to use basically a horizontal line for that one. But now you can see that I have these two rectangles divided out of this bigger one, which is divided out of the even bigger one. Um, down the bottom, this rectangle has to be also subdivided, so I'm going to draw an X from here to here. That gives me an intersection right about there. And that should be the midpoint between uh, this edge and this edge. And um, again, all these, you know, these angles, I'm, I'm kind of using my guides um, to get all of these angles to kind of look like they're sort of angling toward this left vanishing point. Okay, um, so I've got four even divisions by doing the X. The X will always find the center of a rectangle. Okay, now these, these are um, wooden planes that kind of go back into the cabinet. Right. So there's going to be, once you hit this corner, they're going to have to shoot back toward now this vanishing point on the right. And as far as like the depth goes, you need to kind of plot out where the, the back corner is here. Um, basically, uh, from this corner here on the bottom, what we can do is send a line to the right vanishing point until it hits the wall, which is right about here. So basically, the, the back inner corner is about here. So it's almost out of our view. Um, these lines have to continue until they hit that line, and then they will shift slightly, um, and, this, and this little tiny part's actually angling toward the opposite vanishing point now. So there is kind of like an inner edge here that we can see that just, we just see a little bit past this edge right here. And um, again, I'm gonna take this toward the right vanishing point until I hit that same line and then it shifts, uh, so now it comes from the other vanishing point. Um, basically, they're just making little rectangles so they have like kind of little vertical planes, or uh, sorry, horizontal planes inside of this um, bookshelf. Um, this last one here is gonna stay pretty flat, so I don't need to really deal with that too much. Um, although I may wanna make a thickness to these. Now you can, you can kind of eyeball that. Um, basically, I'm, I'm gonna kind of make a slight thickness to the front edge of this kind of wooden plank. Um, I'll do the same thing here, just add kind of a little second line on the bottom here that runs parallel to the top one. And then you can do the same thing right here. Um, again, if you're freehanding this like, like I am right now, it's gonna be a little sloppy. You'll have to kind of go in, um, erase some things, clean it out, you know, and you'll, you'll fix everything. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the basics of, of how to construct that. Um, I'm not gonna get too much more into this because I wanna move on to other things in here. Um, Mainly, I, well, here's what I want to do. Like, like this opening right here of the door. Um, it actually, uh, if you if you kind of look, there's a a thickness to the wall, right? You can kind of see that thickness of the inner edge. There's an inner corner right here. But you see the top inner edge and the side inner edge. So I'm going to draw those now. Um, my apologies. Um, my I'm doing this all off my phone, and my phone ran out of memory so I had to uh, do a quick video transfer um, and I didn't realize it until I got through with that last little part but uh, what we were talking about was these inner edges right here so basically um, all I did is I, I kind of made an observation of how wide the wall looked and um, the, there's these little short edges here and here on the inside edges uh, those both need to angle toward the right vanishing point so you can you want to kind of use your guides don't don't have these angles steeper than they should they need to go toward a vanishing point like that, okay? Um, even the little tiny short ones, right? Um, and what I'm basically, what I did is I drew kind of the, the shorter top edge of the inside plane and then the, um, the slightly wider looking uh, inner plane right here. Okay, so anyway, that, that gets us all caught up to speed. Um, the next thing I think I wanna do is um, some of the stuff that's on this wall. Um, just real quick, just to remind us what's all there. There's a, a couple of pictures and stuff on these little shelves. Um, and then I've got the, uh, the desk here, which is sitting kind of on a box, um, and this slightly complicated other end piece right here. This, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to draw all of it. Um, I'm just going to kind of draw the simple, basic structures of it um, for the purposes of this demonstration, just, just so I don't 
this, I, don't, I don't want this to be like a five hour demo. Um, all right, so anyway, for me to get going with this, um, making a quick observation of how much distance I go this way before I kind of get the first edge of this, um, this box that, that one half of the um, table is kind of sitting on. Um, there's a certain amount of space I go down from where the, uh, the wall intersects before I kind of see the front edge of the box here. Okay, um, the vertical edge actually goes higher um, going this way um, from here to here than from here to here. So there's a, there's a proportional thing I'm kind of taking a look at. Um, the height of it seems to be about here. Again, this, this has to be ob observed. Um, so there's a vertical edge uh, and these two edges I just drew on the top and bottom go toward the uh, right vanishing point. Um, and then there's another vertical here this thing looks slightly wider to me than it, it, than it looks tall, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, going back from this corner, uh, this needs to go toward the vanishing point on the, um, on the left. So um, again, I'm kind of just following the guides there. This almost gets to the wall, um, which is here, before it stops, and then uh, there's kind of like a vertical that shows up over here. Um, yeah, and then just to finish up the box, the uh, this top corner has going to have an angle that goes toward the left vanishing point. So you got two planes here. The left one has two uh, top and bottom edges that both go go to that point, and then the front plane has two edges that go toward the right vanishing point. To finish this off, um, off of this uh, corner right here on the far right, I need to send a line that angles toward the left vanishing point. And um, on the left corner here, this needs to angle toward the right vanishing point. So they kind of intersect each other, um, forming a little corner in the back here. If I drew this as a complete transparency, there would be a vertical edge here. This would be like, like the box as a complete transparent thing. Okay. Um, of course, we only see certain edges of that. Um, on top of this, there's a couple little books, um, which I'm not going to bother to show you, but basically I'm going to simplify those as like another box sitting on top of this box. Um, so they're going to kind of come right off this front edge. Uh, and there's another kind of back corner here. So three little verticals that come up. Um, and like this is kind of how you divide the books up a little bit. These just kind of angle toward the left and right vanishing point as you kind of segment those and divide them. Um, then uh, there's the actual wooden platform that, that this is kind of resting on. Or that, that's resting on this um, these boxes here. So uh, that is going to be an edge that angles toward the right vanishing point, at least on the front edge, right? This is going to kind of drag out this way. Um, and uh, what I can observe, um, and I guess I'll show you this, uh, is like what I'm drawing here is the wooden part, right? And uh, this end piece right here lines up with uh, the end of the box right here. They kind of line up on a vertical. This doesn't shoot out past that point and not very much before it. So they're pretty much in line with each other. Um, so I'm going so, um, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna keep these kind of lined up. So this is going to drag out until I kind of line that up with the um, edge of that box. And that's where that's going to end. Okay. And again, this, this angle goes slightly down into the left. Again, I'm really just looking at the guides that are nearby, um, but yeah, I, ultimately it needs to look like it's going toward this vanishing point here on the right. Okay, and then um, this is, it's a tabletop that has a thickness on the front edge, so I'm actually gonna draw a second edge just above that first one that I did. And I'll, I'll clean that up in a second so you can kind of see what that looks like, but um, yeah, there's basically you know a thickness that I'm trying to get by showing the top and bottom. Uh, so here, I'm gonna grab my ruler. Do a little quick cleanup just on that. Um, again, this, if I'm going to do this with a ruler, I you know I might as well put my pen here at the left vanishing point uh, and just make sure that that ruler is going toward that vanishing point, and then I can draw this line with the confidence that that, that edge is going to the right point. Um, and there's two of them. Uh, that's the bottom one, and this is going to be the top one. And it's just going to show a slight uh, thickness to the front edge of that table top. Right, the little wooden piece. Um, off of this corner, there's going to be another angle that shoots off this way. Uh, that has to go toward the left vanishing point. I'm going to, again, kind of use a ruler here because uh, we're getting to a point where this is like going to be very compressed planes. It's going um, to be hard to draw freehand. So this is just going to go back a little bit until, um, basically until it kind of lines up with this edge of my transparency, give or take a little bit. Um, and then that's going to be a back corner 
Um, let me see if I can zoom in at all. Yeah, so you guys can kind of see that. This, this kind of goes back. And then at that point, um, I'm going to shift angles. So instead of this going off to the left vanishing point, um, it's now going to shift and go toward the right vanishing point so that it kind of looks like this. Okay, um, so when I kind of zoom out, right, you can kind of, you see there's a front plane and a top plane. There's a little back corner here. Uh, one edge, this little short edge goes to the left. This long one goes to the right. It's a little compressed area. It's hard to draw stuff um, near the horizon line. So that's, that's what makes it kind of a little bit difficult. Um, there is um, also a little kind of like a little box thing up here. I'm gonna draw um, that looks kind of something like this. There's a, a vertical, still all a little bit below my eye level. Um, there's another vertical edge and then in the back there's kind of a vertical edge here. So this is like a left short plane, a front uh, longer plane. Um, the bottom edge, again, kind of this has to angle toward the left vanishing point. This is going to angle across the table going to the right vanishing point. And then when we get here, I'm just gonna kind of draw this as a straight line because it's it's so close to the eye level that it could basically be simplified as a simple, um, as a single line. Uh, there's a couple little openings in here, like little kind of shelves that need to kind of angle toward the right vanishing point. Um, but, you know, just gonna keep it simple. It's, it's a very small thing, so I don't, I don't wanna put too much time into that. Um, let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll solidify some of what I drew here. Just make these a little bit darker so we can see them better. Um, okay, and then there's some some shelving up on here that has some pictures and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of quickly kind of brush through this. So this these are all, um, these little shelves here are all on the wall that angles toward the right vanishing point. So they're all gonna kind of go in that direction. Um, and we kind of see basically, they, they kind of look like little rectangles that have a slight tilt to them. Um, so there's one here, then there's uh, there's one right above that that's gonna kind of be here. And I'm kind of, I'm doing like a, a quick just freehand sketch of it and then I'll, I'll clean it up. Um, because I, I really just want to get placement first. Um, the space between this one and this one is about the same as to the next one. So there's a, a third one that kind of goes up here. So right now um, I'm doing this kind of freehand because I'm just kind of plotting position. Um, and then uh, again, we can kind of clean this stuff up later. But yes, I do want to have all these kind of angling down and to the right toward my, um, my right vanishing point over here. All right. Uh, there's a couple um, picture frames on it, so I'm just going to quickly draw those. All of these picture frames are going to have basically uh, vertical edges on the left and right, and their top edges are going to angle down and to the right because, again, they have to kind of look like they're angling toward my, my right vanishing point over here. So there's one here that's kind of taller. Um, you know, as far as proportioning and size, you have to make an observation there. Uh, it looks like the top of this kind of lines up with that. Uh, the next one uh, kind of starts below this shelf and um, it's a little shorter and longer. So again, this, this angle I'm drawing kind of goes toward the right vanishing point until I hit the next vertical edge, which is here. Um, and then actually this shelf, I'm gonna drag this out just a little bit further because there's actually a third little small, uh, tiny little picture frame on the far left here. Um, and it looks kind of like that. Okay, so these are all just rectangles, but what's important here is that these top, uh, these top edges here angle, not, not horizontal, but actually down into the right vanishing point. Okay, um, I'm just going to continue through and do the rest of these. There's another one here with a, another kind of top edge that kind of angles down and to the right. Again, just kind of looking at my guides and and you know at this point actually the guides don't even aren't that important because I already have all these edges right that are angling down to the right. So I'm really just following now these things rather than the guides. I'm almost like losing my guides um, as I draw the room, but now I'm just using edges of the room uh, as my guides. Like this is so close to the top edge of the ceiling, I can just kind of use uh, a parallel to that basically to draw this picture frame. All right, and uh, last one, um, actually this one across is about the same height as the one on the right. So I'm gonna draw a little line across from here to here just to kind of keep the heights consistent. And then a, a last little vertical. Those are a couple more pictures. There's one um, down here on this bottom shelf that's big. 
um, and it goes a little bit past this one here. So two verticals that I'm kind of lining up in a certain way with these ones. And then um, that top edge, which again has to angle down into the le uh, to the right toward the right vanishing point. Here's, uh, I'll just draw a couple more of these guys. There's one, two, and a third little small one here. These don't really have to be positioned that perfectly. I'm trying to kind of position them uh, you know, pretty close to how they look to me, but it, it doesn't really matter. You know, again, what the important thing here is just that these are all kind of um, in, in their proper perspective, you know. And uh, later on, I can go through and detail these. Like, this is like a, a picture frame. It's got a mat um, and then a little small image inside of it, you know. And that, you know, other ones can be kind of detailed that way, too. This one has a slightly uh, thicker frame, which I can kind of just trace around the outer edges and then there's a, another mat with a smaller image inside of it. All right, so th these things can all be detailed um, to whatever level of detail you're comfortable with, but I I'm gonna kind of leave it at that right now, um, just so I can kind of get through the rest of this. There's another picture kind of leaning against the wall here that's actually on the desk. Um, that looks kind of something like that. Again, with this top edge kind of angling toward the right vanishing point, because everything on this wall angles toward the right vanishing point. Here's the mat inside of the frame. Both these top and bottom edges have to angle toward the vanishing point. Any edges um, on this wall that kind of angle, uh, that are below the eye level, angle up and to the right. And then the ones that are above the eye level angle down and to the right. Again, because they're kind of angling toward a point that's on the horizon line uh, out here on the, on the right. Um, there is like this little kind of um, other like support on this side and kind of is a symmetrical um, sort of thing that looks kind of like this. It's like a, like a little fork sort of. And um, main thing here is just when this ends on the bottom right here, I want to be able to kind of almost connect a uh, vanishing point, uh, a right vanishing point line, you know, like a line that goes that way um, to make sure that this edge is a little bit lower than this one, just so that those two kind of line up in perspective toward this vanishing point. That's, that's what I kind of need to do there. There is sort of like a little arcing shape in here. So even something like that's kind of curvy like this, there's a, there is a perspective to it. Um, it's not, you know, you don't just kind of necessarily fully freehand something like this. That there's, you know, there's a, a logic in, into its perspective. There's also another one kind of behind it. Um, in that, uh, I can kind of follow this this guide back a little bit to a new starting point. And this curve right here is going to be repeated over here. Like even where these this bend happens right here and where this bend happens right here, it kind of lines up in perspective toward this vanishing point. Um, the arc that goes across here, um, the, the peak of those arcs kind of line up in perspective that way. So this, this is all still something that um, applies a little bit of perspective. And they kind of they look something like that. Kind of a, a detail I almost was going to just omit, but uh, whatever, I'm, I'm just going to throw it in. Um, here, uh, I'm going to kind of, there, there's like a, uh, like a, a um, a lamp here, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of draw that in. Now this is a cylinder, so it means it's got two kind of vertical edges. Um, and it ends about here. Now, uh, w w this, this whole body of it's a little bit lower than my eye level, which means that I need to kind of have a very, very flat ellipse on the top and a slightly more open one on the bottom. Um, here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. that's as much as I can zoom in right but you see there's kind of an open ellipse right here um, there's like a half ellipse here um, the ellipse on the top has got to be fairly flat almost completely flat because it's so close to that eye level line once it gets to the eye level line it's a completely flat edge um, there's a lamp shade that kind of is tilting a little bit so there's kind of an ellipse that looks like that and uh, the there's like the lamp shades basically a cone that goes up to a vertical-ish kind of like center line. So the, the two side edges off of this ellipse kind of angle toward the same point on this vertical line. And then just at the end here, I'm just gonna kind of cap this off with another kind of half ellipse, 
right? So this edge and this edge kind of, they, they angle up to a point, um, which is kind of lined up with its tilting center. The, the lampshade's got a little tilt to it, so it's not perfectly vertical. Um, and then I just got kind of a, a open ellipse here because it's tilting kind of backward a little bit, and then a half ellipse up here. So I'm actually kind of looking inside of the lampshade a little bit, and you can kind of see there's like a little bit of that. Um, I can detail this a little bit, but that's that's basically my lampshade right there. Okay, so um, that's, that's all I'm gonna do on the desk, and I'm just gonna kind of show you, okay, this is what I drew, um, and this is what I'm looking at. Okay, so there was some editing. Uh, I didn't draw every, every everything, but I probably would go into this later on and do more details. Um, I, I guess just because it's cool, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw the sword here. This is a sword I actually picked up in um, in uh, Scotland. It's bigger than me. <laughs> it's like the Braveheart sword. Um, anyway, this this goes up like that. Um, the, there's a, the handle of this thing kind of ends up here. Just this massive, massive World of Warcraft esque kind of sword. Um, and then there's uh, the the hand guard right here. Now this this is kind of just a curve, but see the endpoints of the curve line up in perspective toward the right vanishing point. So um, again, <laughs> things that don't seem like they would have a lot of perspective uh, actually do have a little bit of applicable perspective to them. Things like curves, right, still have a, a perspective to them. Okay, I'm gonna kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna move on. Because um, that, it's, you know, as far as like detail goes, I mean, some of the stuff gets so small. Um, there's a, a limit to how much you can reasonably do. So, um, you know, that's that's about as far as I'm going to take it. Uh, there's a little chain that kind of holds it up on the wall. I guess I'll I'll draw that in. Um, but yeah. So that basically finishes that that left wall. Um, I'm going to go back to the right wall. There is um, a couple things going on over here. Uh, again, I'm just going to quickly show you guys what we're looking at. Um, basically, there's the uh, flat screen TV sitting on a box. I guess I could do the sound bar. Um, and then there's this kind of guy right here, which I'm gonna kind of start from the back, which is this thing, and work my way to things that are in the front, which is here. Um, may or may not do all that stuff, um, just again, for the sake of time. Okay, so um, everything in perspective can start as a box, right? So. Um, this table, uh, um, it's got like kind of a little curved front, but um, basically I'm gonna start with a box shape. Uh, so th what I'm doing right now is I'm setting an angle, at, the short angle that goes to the right vanishing point, this slightly longer one that goes toward the left vanishing point. This one also goes toward the left vanishing point. And uh, from this corner, there's like a vertical that will stop when it lines up with the front of the uh, bookshelf. And then I'm guesstimating length here ending on a vertical, and then this angles up to the right, up and to the right, toward the right vanishing point, um, until we hit a corner here, and then this will go down like that. Um, this is a simplification of a table. Uh, there is sort of this curving thing here. So I have two endpoints for this to curve on, right? It dips like this. And then the legs of the table, um, as I look at them, they kind of angle out toward these two endpoints. So there's like this, and um, behind that, there's like another leg of the table, which kind of angles in the same way. I kind of just see that poking out from behind here. Um, and then there's gonna be another, presumably another leg here that angles out like that, and um, probably another one right here. Now, I, I, this, a lot of this stuff right here is actually overlapped by the, uh, the TV and the box in front of it, but um, you can kind of see like basically what I've, what I've done there is pretty similar to what I can I can see here, right? Again, angles are a little different, um, but it, the important thing is that it all works in perspective. Okay, and so that was all built out of a box. I think um, on the I can't really tell what's going on, on the other end. There's probably another curving thing here, but we don't have to draw it um, because now I, I got the um, the box with the TV in front of it that I have to draw. So again, this is an observation. I'm trying to find this top corner of this box that's gonna drop down like this from this point. Um, and that's gonna kinda come down until it gets around to the ground somewhere around here. Um, 
just at first I'm gonna guess the height of this and then once I hit this top corner it's gonna shoot back toward the right vanishing point um, and once this hits the ground here uh, again I'm gonna kind of send this off toward the right vanishing point so it's near this guide right here I'm just gonna kind of send that back until it gets pretty close to the back of the wall here at which point there's gonna be a vertical edge that will run into this this is a transparency um, from here this is gonna kind of go across and um, this is coming from the left the left vanishing point now um, same thing off of this corner there's gonna be another one of these kind of edges that angles down into the right away from the the left vanishing points uh, over here there's also a third one that's gonna be doing the same thing all right so you, again you kind of see the uh, relation of the guides right this is a guide this is a guide these are all my little grid lines, right? Um, and those tell me what these angles need to be, roughly, right? Um, the opposite ones, like this edge right here, follow the other guides that are going toward the opposite direction, right? So it's simple. Um, I have to observe the length of this. It looks like this um, probably could reasonably go at about this far until I hit a vertical edge. Um, and then again, I have to send this back toward the right vanishing point. This is going to go off along the guide until it runs into this edge, at which point a vertical will drop down, and then we can connect these in the back here. Okay, so that box is going to have the TV on it. That's uh, this, this chest right here. Again, it doesn't look exactly like the chest I'm looking at uh, proportionately, but it's, it's close enough. Um, I can always modify spaces and stuff, but, um, but it's, it's good enough for our purpose. Again, it's, it's in perspective. That's kind of the important thing. Um, so next there's a, a TV sitting on top of here. It's a big flat screen TV, basically um, a big rectangle. So there's kind of a vertical edge. Um, the top of this TV from my perspective kind of lines up with the um, horizon line. I could make a choice to make it a little bit higher um, and that'll make it more of an angle, but whatever. I'm just gonna let that be where it is. Um, from this bottom corner, it's actually gonna start angling now. Because again, these are really technically both these edges are going toward the uh, left vanishing point over here, right? It's just that this one happens to be on the horizon line, so it's level by the time it hits here. It just stays level the whole time. But this one angles down, right, away from that point. Okay, um, this ends about here. So it goes past this corner, not quite to this corner. And it's about, it looks like it's about here when this comes to an end point and that's my flat screen TV I I'm actually gonna go on ahead and make this a little bit taller just because my TV looks a little taller than that um, but yeah so at this point now if I do that this this edge is gonna actually angle down into the left because it's got to go to that vanishing point so it's not it's not quite horizontal anymore if it's up here right lines are only horizontal when they're on the, the horizon line um, so this if I hadn't if I wasn't working in pen I would erase that right here but whatever um, cool. and then there's like an inner frame to the TV so there's two little vertical edges just kind of eyeballing the space so these look pretty even um, this is gonna follow that top edge almost parallel to it this is gonna follow the bottom edge just about parallel to that bottom edge of the first rectangle um, and then that starts to kind of look like a flat screen TV there is like a little um, cylindrical base that comes down and lands on um, what I think is another box form. It's like a little rectangle platform. And um, yeah, there's a sound bar, like a, like a speaker thing here. I'm probably gonna leave that alone for now. Um, just straighten this out a little bit. Um, and th there could be detailing like crazy um, as far as like this chest and everything. Um, I don't think I'm going to get into too much detail with that. Again, you know, like details, um, you know, bring them in. You know, yeah, this is your portfolio piece uh, if you're taking my portfolio development class. Um, if not, you're just getting a grade for it or something. But either way, this is a piece of your artwork. Um, put as much detail and love into it as, as you know, you're proud of. Um, but you don't want to really jump into the details right away. Um, I'm actually kind of really holding off on stuff just so I can get the basics laid in. Um, it's, not, it's not just that I don't want to bore everybody with this like retardedly long demo, which is already really long, um, but it's also the fact that you know you want kind of the basic structures in first, then the details can come in later. Um, 
So anyway, um, on that note, last thing I'm going to do, um, well, here, I'll, I'll do one more quick thing. Um, just this, <laughs> this actually is kind of a detail, but there's a, kind of a little bit of a base to this, which I am going to draw out. This actually isn't really what I wanted to show you guys, but I'm just going to do that first. Um, but on the front of this box, there's kind of like a little double door thing. So what I'm going to do is kind of draw the rectangle that the door is kind of, the double door thing is kind of made of. And this goes toward the right vanishing point. These are two verticals. Um, and then again, just to kind of make the double doors nice and even, there is a little trick of using the X that we can do here that shows us where the center is, and that gives me a nice dividing line. Um, there are two little handles on here that look like little circles. There's one right here. The other one needs to line up in perspective with the one on the, the, on the right. So this one, I'm trying to kind of keep the alignment of these two um, angling toward this point, if that makes sense. Like, right, if I kind of zoom in, um, I want this one to sit in alignment with this one going up and to the right toward the vanishing point. Right, that keeps it in perspective. All right, so anyway, last thing I'm gonna do is the, the yoga mat and then I'll be done. Okay, again, um, an observation to make here. The corner of the yoga mat, that's where I wanna start. Directly above that is kind of the inner corner of the room right here, right? If I follow this edge out, it hits, um, it kind of lines up with kind of almost like this little corner right here of the uh, uh, of the bookshelf. And if I follow this one out, it kind of hits probably where the, the middle of this is, right? In perspective, if these lines continue here and here. So what I'm trying to do is triangulate where this corner starts. Directly above that's a good starting point, right? So if, if this inner edge uh, of the room lines up vertically with that corner, that's very helpful to me for positioning if I'm, if I'm really trying to get this as accurate as possible, right? So if I take that inner corner and kind of lightly draw a line down, somewhere along that vertical line is where that corner is gonna go. And if you remember what I said, um, like kind of where the middle of this hits the ground, if I send this out in perspective, that's gonna be where one edge of this thing comes out from. The other one kind of lines up with this corner. And if I bring a line out in perspective from that corner, Right. This this is kind of about where that should be. Right. This is a starting point. You can also look at the space around here. This is kind of like a negative shape. You know, you can eyeball spacing this way and this way. But look at alignment. You know, because you have all the stuff on the walls, um, and one of these corners or all these corners probably align with something that you've drawn back here, and that's how you're going to figure out placement. Let's look at the other um, corner because I want to kind of figure out how far this goes before I stop it. Let's take a look. That's the other corner directly above that, almost on a, on a vertical. You could kind of line up your pencil this way. And you can see it lines up uh, almost with this kind of left edge of this box, right? So um, that left edge of that box on my drawing is here. So I draw a little line down. That means this line continues in perspective until it gets to about that point, at which point we're gonna, we're gonna draw lines now back this way. All right, this is going with the guide that's nearest to it that moves away from the left vanishing point. This is gonna continue out this way. And um, it looks like it's gonna end about here. Okay, just based on uh, corner to corner alignment, which I'm not gonna show you guys, but yet this kind of lines up with this corner here. Um, oh, sorry. All right, this, this and this kind of line up with that corner. So there's my yoga mat, right? Um, I can add, there is, there is kind of a, a um, there's a couch that kind of I see here. Um, I'm gonna make the decision just to kind of edit that out. It's not really that important. Um, I mean, I don't know, it, it, it really depends on what you want. Um, you know, if you, if you feel like that's something that's non-distracting or something like that. But I think for me, I'm just gonna kind of leave it. There are, um, I'm drawing little legs that kind of come out of the bottom of this thing. Um, main thing here, just keep the legs aligned so that they um, are the same height in perspective. Um, they're little short legs with little short ends. Um, so what we wanna make sure of is that this little short edge and this little short edge, that they align in perspective toward the left vanishing point and that they both 
both those edges actually angle toward that vanishing point. Um, as they hit the corners and shift, now this is gonna angle up toward the right vanishing point, and so is this little angle here. Okay, so they kind of make little V shapes on the bottom. Okay, um, let's see, we can add a little thickness to that. Um, and any, any other things that we want to add to that. I mean, this, now at this point, we're really going to be getting into um, detail. So um, let's see. Last thing I'll do is actually not a detail. It's a, it's a little, well, sort of a detail. It's a little vent on the ground. OK, I'm just going to draw that. All right, so um, basically, like this is I'm gonna just kind of show you what we got and what we were looking at. Uh, Okay, so that's that's my drawing in perspective. This is what I was looking at. That to that to that. Um, the rest of this is just how much I want to put into it. You know how much detail I think is important to to complete it. Um, but you you know you might notice like not every angle um, like say like the angles of the uh, the mat here may not exactly match with the angles that I see, but they're, they're close, right? Um, so again, the important thing is just that we are applying the perspective. Um, there's a consistency in that all left-facing edges go to the left vanishing point, all the, the right-facing edges angle toward the right vanishing point. Um, and uh, as we build detail further, uh, it's, it's just you got to keep applying the same methods and the same ideas um, to most things. Almost everything in this room um, is, you know, like you, we angle furniture so that it's kind of parallel to the walls usually. So um, with the exception of a, like little things like, like this and this and, and, you know, little deep, like small things like that. Um, everything that's kind of a straight edge thing though, uh, basically is running parallel to one of my walls. Um, and so, you know, you have to use your vanishing points uh, for their top and bottom edges. Okay. Um, anyway, that's, that's it, um, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> again, the rest of it's detail, but uh, that's, that's how you kind of go through an observational perspective drawing. So uh, thanks for watching, and I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed it and found it uh, useful to you.